we're looking at Utah cost of living. St. George, I think, was ranked as is some of the most expensive cost of living places in the country. Truthfully, right now, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot that we can do about it, but other than face face the reality that it is what it is. So, um, it's it's a tough it's a tough measure to look at. I don't necessarily see a whole lot of change happening though, uh, anytime soon. When it comes to that, I, I'm not seeing downward pressure on pricing enough to really impact that. Interest rates have pulled back a whole percent. So I think it's a good opportunity for buyers. And like to your point, over the next you know three months, this is still a good window to get in. We're going to see inventory jump. Sellers are going to get off the fence after the holidays. Most of the time, sellers yeah. just don't want to sell during Christmas, right? They don't want to deal with you know um, showing the house, keeping it clean. Uh, where do we go? What if we get an offer a couple of weeks before Christmas? And then then you're scrambling to do all this stuff where yeah. normally the holidays is a checkout time. So demand stays strong, but sellers typically don't want to go through that. But um, I think there's good opportunity for sellers. I think prices are at the highest point they're going to be over the next 12 months. That's that's my analysis on it. I don't know if everybody agrees or disagrees, but um, um, if I'm a seller, I think going back the – so we talked about the buyer and, and considerations there. If I'm a seller – I'm looking at where's the price trend. We're seeing uh, it looks like some stability in the pricing market under a million. Um, looking at the volume, going back to that volume, even you know under a million, we still have a big delta between um, the active volume on the market and what's actually being sold um, as far as total volume goes. But this is the historic, you know, historically the quarter four is the low point in demand. Less people buy. Mm-hmm. Um, in this time frame, sellers have been pulling off the market. We've seen two two months back to back where new new volumes come on and I, less. You know, if if you also look at the active volume, that's a you know, it's significantly more people wanting to sell their home right now, in my opinion. Like the, like the and wanting more chart, for their home too. Well, they might want more for it, but they're also putting it on the market. They're willing to sell it. Why is somebody willing to sell it? You know, is there is there a component out there that people are looking at prices coming down? Prices have come down what roughly eighteen percent from the peak here locally. Right. Yeah, twenty percent. I think 20, we're at twenty percent. Okay. First off, if somebody's, um, you know, like retirement account dropped twenty percent, they would want to be like doing something different, right? Yeah. Most they'd want to change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's people out there that have gotten, you know, they same kind of concept from a behavioral standpoint. House prices are going down. They're still high. I still made money if I sell now. Let's try to do something different, right? Yep. Try to do something different. So a little bit of that fear from a behavioral standpoint. And my case is, or what, what I'm trying to um, help people understand is that when, when there's that fear and people want to sell, people are thinking that, you know, housing prices have to come down. Interest rates are so high. The pr- ha- prices have to come down. And then you see a little bit of pullback in those interest rates momentarily. That, that's, your, that's your opportunity to strike. Yeah. Right. Um, you got to be ready to. And, and, and you buy it. Right. So, you know, it's like Warren Buffett always said, right. Um, fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Right. It's just really, really hard to go be greedy when others are fearful, but this chart, the price is, trends on that one. this chart is indicating that, you know, you, you may be in the midst of that. And if, and if not yet soon. Yeah. So, so, if, you know, going to the peak being April, March, April of 22, we pulled back about uh, 20% since then. Um, if I'm a seller, I don't want to be chasing the ball down the hill, right? I, I don't want to be trying to price the home from yesterday's prices or, three months ago. And in some cases, people I've, I've seen people that are listening. What, what was that house we were looking at Jeff, where they, they bought it almost 18 months ago and they put it on the market for like 18% more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. So, you know, that that's, that's not, um, what the seller needs is one thing, but to have, to have an agent, hopefully that agent said, Hey, I, I think this is unlikely that this is the price yeah. I'm willing to go and put it on the market, which goes back to that volume. It's like, you, you can have a bunch of houses on the market. doesn't necessarily doesn't mean that yeah. that's actually what's going to sell. Yep. But you know, I've had so many conversations with sellers that they pick their agent based off of their ability to agree with the previously thought or want price, not based off of, um, what the reality of the market was. And so whenever I go and sit down with a seller, I'm trying to bridge this gap between what they think the home's worth and what they want it to be worth versus what I actually think the market value of that property really is. And for anyone listening, the value of your home is not at all what you think it is. It is only what everyone else thinks it is. Yeah, it's only well, it's not only, even everyone. Just what other people that are qualified to buy I think it a is. A buyer, ready, willing, and able buyer is willing, willing and able buyer. Really, it's one one person. It's the value of what one person thinks your home is and the person 
you know, what, what you're willing to do to get to that one person. And so, so from one period of, of time to the next, right, from one six months to the next six months, and historically, that's kind of how markets have, have transitioned. If I'm, if I'm really, um, if I'm looking at the market and, and everything is dependent upon your house, right? If I have a, if I have a split level home built in 1970 on a small lot, um, uh, adjoining a busy road, you know, the reality is the value of your home is significantly less today than it was in April of 22. Not, not just because of the conditional elements that, that, that make that val- that property less desirable, but then you're dealing with a, a significantly smaller demand pool, right? So you're just, you're cutting out all of this um, interest in who would buy that particular property. Right. And most buyers, what, what they end up doing when, um, when presented with the inventory on the market, if they don't like what they see, they just don't buy. They mm-hmm. always have the option of just saying, oh, I'm not going to change the situation I'm in now. Yeah. They're not going to go above and beyond to purchase something uh, or even write offers. I mean, you, there's a lot of the, the point where you could price your home to where the people that would actually buy it, if it was in the market, aren't mm-hmm. even seeing it. It's not even an option. They go to Zillow and they say, I could buy between this and this, or I'm looking at a price per square foot. I see a lot of uh, buyers, you know, decide whether or not they, they think there's value in that home by just looking at the price per square foot. And that, that completely kind of messes up your ability to, to have people see you Mm -hmm. in the market, right? So pricing, pricing your home correctly for the market is going to tell you, I will also say this, you list your house, you don't have to sell it to a buyer that comes in with a low, lower purchase price, right? You don't, in some cases, even if they give you your price, you can say no based off their terms, right? They could, or or their timing, right? So I think there's this assumption that, well, if I list the house and somebody brings me an offer at that purchase price, I have to take it. It's like, no, that's not the, that's not the case. That's, a, that's really not the case. And pricing your home in the market, you're likely to get multiple offers. We just dealt with that with that uh, land property here in, in St. George where yeah. it, wasn't on the mar- it was on the market, overpriced. As soon as they dropped it into value, we, we ended up competing against three other offers for a, a property that was on the market for 90 days yeah. by, because they brought it down into the market price. So then now the seller gets to pick and choose exactly who they go with, who's the best, best I, possible buyer. I think that property was on the market longer than that. I think it was more like 180 days. So, so to the point, right, is like if you, if you uh, set this price too high, you end up taking too much, a lot of time to try and actually sell it, where if you would have priced it correctly on the front end, you might not have fallen to where the ball was going. You would have cut it off at the pass, right? You ran down, you know, the ball's rolling down the hill. You can't just keep reaching for it as it's rolling. You have to run down around it and stop the ball. Right, yeah. you can't you can't just lean forward. So you almost have to go a little bit uh, lower in in a comfortability zone in order to to stay ahead of it because because time is money, right? Time's money. So if I'm a seller, I I still think we're in a a, a great situation to sell. You're in a, a seller's market, especially uh, below six hundred thousand. If we look at specifically months of inventory, if you, if you click on months of inventory real quick as we start to wrap this up. Uh, months of inventory is an index of how fast is the inventory absorbing into the market. We've seen one of the biggest jumps month over month. So under a million, um, the amount of inventory went from under three months of inventory to just under four. So almost a a whole month of inventory, um, go all the way to the edge. So at the bottom, uh, 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 October, November, 23, Jeff, 23, just the newest data. So we went from uh, 2.8 months on the market to, or two month, 2.8 months of inventory to 3.9 months of inventory. Uh, historically speaking, anything over four months of inventory becomes a neutral market. There's no, no pressure on pricing going left or right. And then anything over six months of inventory is a, is a, is a buyer's market. There's downward pressure on pricing, right? And so I think you're in the neutral channel right now. We're in the neutral, we're in the neutral but it's, it's also a rolling 12. It's a rolling 12. So the way this is calculated is on rolling 12. It's not necessarily showing exactly whether we're a buyer, a seller's mm-hmm. market. Sure. But I think we've officially rolled into a neutral. And depending on the price point, if you're under 600,000, we're still still in that seller's market. But we're starting to um, transition into a buyer's market as a whole. So we're seeing that inventory jump uh, back to that that uh, buyer demand conversation. Uh, that's big. Big absorption jump for a single month. I think it's one of the biggest we've seen in the last five years, truthfully. Mm